Welcome. My name's Cam Lesh. Uh, I have the pleasure and honour of uh, op making some opening remarks today. I sort of said to Danny, I'm speaking for three minutes. She said, no, we've got it down for ten. So, <laughs> but you never know. Uh, as, as my chief exec there, Clive K, will attest, uh, being shot words is not one of my problems, is it, Clive? <laughs> yeah. No. Uh, I, I, she did say three, <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to introduce Clive. Clive's the chief executive of the Trust. Uh, despite the fact he looks old, he actually has only been <laughs> chief executive for a year and a half. And I, and I make a point of saying that, actually. Uh, he's been chief executive for a year and a half. We know how difficult uh, and challenging the NHS is at the moment. This hospital is no different. We're a big teaching trust in the middle of a, a, a city with many, many challenges. Uh, 360 odd million pound turnover. 6,000 sort of people working in and out, 5,000 full-time <laughs> staff. Uh, when I came ab about a year and a half ago, and then Clive was appointed shortly after, we've made some big changes, uh, and we've learnt a lot. We've changed governance structures. We've had new buildings being developed everywhere. We're, we've got the staffing challenges, financial challenges. And I mentioned that because uh, I think only yesterday, Clive was... Uh, uh, nominated as one of the top 50 chief execs in the country by HSJ. So, well done, Clive. <laughs> in a very short space of time. And one of the reasons why I hope, besides the fact you had excellent mentorship and leadership, um, <laughs> is we've learned over the last year that uh, a place like this can't exist without talking to people, without talking to staff, without talking to external stakeholders, without making partnerships, without being creative and innovative. It's not just about keeping the ship going. It's not just about making sure we, we cut the budgets where we have to do. In an environment like this, we have to be creative and innovative. And I think this is what today is all about. It's about trying to provide the highest quality, best healthcare we can for the city uh, of Bradford for the people who live here, for all the people who live here. If people have a dementia, living with dementia, they need to be able to live a full and active and happy life, um, not be hidden away. And, and I think that's really important. And, and I think creativity and innovation can help to do that. Technology, without a shadow of a doubt, can help to do that. Um, and I sort of came back from London yesterday and. Uh, rushed to one of the wards to, to be with Danny to have a look at one of these My Life units. Um, and Graham, I didn't sleep well last night because all the ideas that kept coming from this thing, I thought, wow, it's such a simple concept. Why haven't we done it? And why don't we use it? Why don't we develop it? Why don't we develop it for multi-ethnic populations? Why don't we develop it for uh, people with learning disabilities? Why don't we have it developed so we can make them cheaper and bigger and put one in every house and you know, link everybody up. But that's the future because the healthcare system as it exists will not survive. Don't mind if our friend Jeremy Hunt puts another 20 billion in, <laughs> it will not survive. It is going to break. We have to think differently. And it's not about being stuck in these four walls, treating people and putting them out. It's about working with people in the community, working with people outside, working with everybody to help them live in their own homes, in their own communities, with their own families in the best way possible. And I think I th and we'll learn a lot about it today, about how it's been used to, you know, stop people falling, and being agitated in very uh, difficult environments like A&E departments, uh, certainly in the wards here. Uh, it, it's a fantastic product and I, I'd love to see how, how this can be developed. Things like this don't simply happen. I mean, you know, in, in organisations you need good leadership. I mentioned Clive's leadership in terms of engaging with our staff and learning and listening and looking. But we've had, you know, Danny here and her team, uh, without somebody constantly saying, dementia, dementia, you forgot to do this, it, it, it can easily drop off the agenda. You need that leadership constantly. And it makes a huge difference to have those individuals with passion that carry on that, that battle as it was, because it does become a battle sometimes to forget. I, I, many years ago, I became, I was working with the Mental Health Act Commission. So I, I was a chairman of the Mental Health Act Commission that was responsible for looking after the care and treatment of all patients detained in England and Wales. And we espoused great values of working with service users. 
uh, we espoused them and talked about them and told everybody else to do it. I'm not sure we did it quite well until about seven years uh, at the beginning of my uh, chairmanship we, we had a, an opportunity for a board member and all the usual people came with their qualifications and skills to be a, a non-executive board member and, and a, a, a young woman came and says you know I probably don't meet all the essential requirements but I'm a good commissioner and she was I've been sectioned three times in my life if you put me on the board I'll be a pain in your side and I'll be talking about the values of user involvement okay so we appointed her she ended up being the best non-exec member we had but she was constantly on about it and we moved from talking about it to making sure service users even those detained in Broadmoor, Ashworth and Rampton were part of the Commission's policy making process so co-production producing these units learning from our patients learning from uh, people we work with from carers and families it is, is without a doubt the best way forward um, so it's, it's great for me um, 35 years ago I was an ambulance man uh, bringing patients to this hospital um, then I went on to do a few of the bits and pieces I worked in the police service worked in careers and then worked in the voluntary sector uh, I became a social worker by trade set up one of the first mother and baby drug rehabs in the country set up a whole host of daycare facilities for mental health uh, and then uh, worked with uh, uh, crime and extremism in prisons uh, and then became an academic um, and then ended up in the House of Lords which is really nice to have all the ability to learn and listen and things I've done working with people and now can turn into policy and legislation. Uh, so it's lovely 30 years later to come back uh, to be chair of this great trust. Um, we do a lot of fantastic work. Uh, I want to increase it and I think with, with Danny and her team we can because up the road we have the Salford Institute for Mental Health that's developing we have a great university department here that's won the Queen's Anniversary Award for Mental Health we have a fantastic team of people here and vast experience and I think working with the, the My Life people I think we can work together and develop a whole range of new services and, and be leading like we haven't shouted about some of the things that we do well so we've got 20 units here, thanks to our Charitable Funds Committee, but I think we're looking to invest and grow that uh, and certainly have many more. I've rabbited away, I haven't got a clue what I'm supposed to say now. I should have told you big, from the beginning, actually, the first thing I should have told you is we're not expecting a fire alarm. <laughs> <laughs> I was just testing whether you remembered. Uh, luckily, in the last five minutes, we haven't had one. Yeah. If we do then we're very good, uh, the senior management here, about making sure if fire alarms happen, um, we deal with them. So Clive will shoot out of those doors, I will shoot out of those doors, and if you can keep up with us, you'll be safe. <laughs> so green doors, back and forward, and the WCs are here, just outside. We, you're not going to have tea at half past ten, like we, we promised you, because we're running half an hour late, so that'll come when it does, when... Uh, uh, somebody called Joanna James finishes then we'll have tea and then we'll have lunch following that I'm really looking forward to trying to stay for some of the sessions here because I think uh, I, I really want to learn and, and this will be the first of it and this is not just about hospitals so please take this away you know I you can't come to Yorkshire and not say the word cricket <laughs> cricket every, cricket lovers how many cricket lovers one <coughs> not just men no look there's a women's super league starting this year it's going to be the biggest thing going for Sky, women's IPL knockout competition. Why do I mention cricket? Because I'm on, I sit on the English and Wales cricket board, so I love cricket. But more importantly, uh, and, and Danny came with, with one of our consultants as well, um, Lord's Cricket Ground, the home of cricket. So they are going to make sure that they try to become the first major iconic sports centre in the world of cricket to be a dementia-friendly cricket ground. Uh, they are already working with uh, what they call the Silver Grey Club. They have a group of people with dementia who come uh, regularly to Lords, brings back lots of memories. They work with them. Uh, they're even on about having a cricket match in, in, in the hallowed ground. Um, or the Oval is following suit. And yesterday I spoke to the chairman of Hampshire Cricket Club, who again 
a, a want to met an iconic um, cricket ground dementia friendly their staff being trained how you buy a ticket how what would make it easier for um, family to attend and a memory so again you know this is not just about the health service it's about making a city dementia friendly and certainly you know I'm very keen in my other roles in Bradford to try and help make sure that happens finally you'll have seen out there that two crazy people Danny being one of them and Elizabeth Riley, Riley. Not here today, two completely crazy people are going to go and walk and trek the Great Wall of China. But we all need to put our hands in their pockets because they're going to go and raise some money for a really good cause. Forget me not charity. So well done. Hope that works well. We shall watch you uh, from the comfort of our own homes on WhatsApp or whatever it is. We'll watch it. I hope you enjoy the day. Uh, I hope that's been long enough and short enough. And I look forward to uh, listening to some of the other speakers. And the first speaker is going to be Sharon Parsons. Welcome, Sharon. <laughs>